Hi everybody, this is Nafish. Uh, today we are going to go over amplitude shift keying modulation and we are going to do the implementation in Python. So I have opened up Jupyter Notebook, imported NumPy as NP and Matplotlib as PLT. Okay, and let's say our symbol length is 100. So each bit will be represented by one symbol. Okay, and then uh, we are going to generate that bits randomly, right? So random, we have to call NP, dot, then random, dot, then rand int and it is going to be either 0 or 1 and the length will be the symbol length okay and going to store this in a variable called s okay and then let's run it uh, i have to run this line first and then this guy and then let's plot out our um, our symbol so if i plot it okay so this is uh, basically you know if you look into the data um, one symbol is represented by only one sample okay I can just make it clear a bit uh, if I do this plot with a different color you can see um, one one bit is represented by one sample okay so usually uh, in digital communication we have multiple samples to represent one bit okay so let's say our sample length uh, is 10 so we're going to use 10 samples to represent one bit or one symbol okay and then uh, we are going to create a container called data okay with this to the data here and then let's run a for loop. So for i in a range, and then um, start value is zero, then our length of the data and the increment is one. Okay, so we're going to do a loop. And here, uh, we are going to store the data um, uh, in, in the variable ca called data. Okay, so the logic here will be, we are going to check, you know, each bit whenever it is zero. Okay, so let's write down if, if this is zero i think there is some indentation missing yeah if this is zero then what we, what we're going to do is np dot zeros and then sample length so we're going to increase the sample by 10 okay whenever it's zero and keep it in the container data that happened okay so just keeping the values in data and if uh, this condition is not satisfied then we're going to do the same thing but instead of zero it's, it's going to be one right so just paste it there uh, hope indentation is correct although it's showing some error here okay and this here uh, we, are, we need to change it to ones okay so basically the logic is simple whenever zero replace the zero with 10 more zeros one replace the ones by 10 more ones okay and hopefully this will run uh, let's write uh, s is not defined uh, why is that oh okay because this is going to be the caps okay so run it and we have the data so let's look into the data first okay and if i look the data okay i can see what it is doing it's um, we are having uh, you know rather than one zero there's uh, we are going to have 10 samples right of zeros say similar with one and zeros you know all the numbers but uh, th there are multiple arrows arrays created right so let's convert this multiple arrays into a single array and the way we can do it is uh, doing np dot horizontal stacking okay and the input is the data and let's uh, uh, it, um, let's have the same data here so basically replace the data value with this uh, horizontal stacking okay and we want to see the data again okay so run it. and you see like rather than multiple arrays we are having just only one array and containing all the all of our data after the sampling okay so we have the data now and now we are um, ready for the modulation so let's create a carrier so let's say carrier is um, we have amplitude then just a sinus error right so np dot sign then two times np dot pi times fc times t okay so the amplitude is not defined so let's say amplitude is one carrier amplitude okay and then we have to have the frequency let's say frequencies 500 and um, we need to know the sampling frequency so f is going to be the sample length so how many samples we have in one second so that's going to be uh, the sample length multiplied by uh, the symbol length okay so we have the sampling frequency fs as this okay this is going to be the symbol symbol length okay and uh, let's have 100 samples for every bit okay 
So let's run this section again. And this is, oh, time is not defined. So time is, let's say, since we are doing the calculation for one second, right? So NP dot A range, the start time is zero, end time is one. And uh, then um, our delta T is one over the sampling frequency. So delta T is one by FS, okay? So here, the sampling interval, delta T, okay? So let's run this part. Okay, so we have our carrier and uh, let's uh, generate the modul modulated output. So uh, mod ASK is nothing but multiplied by the, multiply the data with this carrier, okay? So let's run that and let's have a plotting. So plt.plot and then modulation ASK, okay? Oops, okay. So I think we have gotten our plot, um, but we, we need to uh, kind of zoom in a bit. So plt dot plot, uh, plt dot axis. Okay, and let's say we, we want to look out like 2000. Okay, so zero to 2000, and minus one to one. Okay, let's run this part. Okay, maybe we can zoom a bit more so that we can see how many cycles is um, in the, is there in a single bit. Okay, so maybe we can do let's say up to 1000. Okay and run it okay so we see one two three four five five samples um represented by one um for one bit okay how is that because you see uh we have 500 samples per second right so this is samples per second and basically um one the length of one bit is 100 okay so that's why uh, when you have 500 that means five cycles, one, two, three, four, five. Five samples is representing one bit, okay? So this is basically the output in um, the modulated signal. And this is also called on-off. So basically whenever on-off king, cause whenever we have a um, number one or the bit is one, you can see uh, modulation spectrum them there. When there is zero, there is DC only, okay? So we can just, uh, we can just pause this line and have the, all way from maybe okay so this is basically up to the sampling frequencies it is going so let's say uh, like 5000 let's see some more region okay so this is what we see and now we can uh, convert this signal this uh, ASK signal into frequency domain okay so to do that uh, y um, mod is uh, NP dot FFT dot FFT and then ASK mod I think it's, uh, let me see the name, it's mod ASK, so mod ASK, okay? So we want to see the spectrum, right? So we have this uh, FFT converted and we, we would like to take, um, see the frequency as well. So y freak is NP dot FFT dot FFT freak. If you press tab, you're going to see here, we have to put two inputs. One is the number of samples, okay? So I think that is the FS and then delta T, okay? So then we are going to see the uh, frequency as well. So let's look into this frequency because there is something I would like to mention. Uh, so basically we are converting this uh, axis, time axis to the frequency, okay? And if you look into here, you see how the frequencies are, like it's starting from zero, but it's going into minus three, minus two, minus one. So basically uh, we want something from which will start from the negative axis then come to zero and then go to the positive axis. So we have to rearrange this, okay? And the way we can do it is, let's say index is np dot uh, arc sort. So basically sorting out this, the, all these values, okay, of frequency, okay? And let's run it, okay? So we have sorted out the frequency values and then uh, y freak and reassigning everything, okay? Is y freak. So basically indexing the values, okay, IDX. And need to do the same from for this modulated as well. So Y mod is Y mod. And then we have the indexing IDX, okay? So let's run this and let's plot out our spectrum, okay? So plt dot plot, and then in X axis, we have the Y freak. And then in Y axis, we have the Y mod. Would like to take the absolute value of it. Okay, so let's take the absolute value and let's spot it out. 
Okay, so we can see our spectrum. Uh, you know, whenever we're going to do FFT, we're going to have an image which is going to show up in the neg negative axis. We can uh, zoom it a bit, uh, but before doing that, we would like to normalize it. Okay, so let's do the normalization here. So uh, max of ABS of this Y1. Okay, so if I do that, okay, so the highest value is one. Okay, and here, um, let's say pld dot axis and our value here is from zero x axis from zero to let's say uh, take 500 okay so zero to 500 because our frequency spectrum if you look into here um if is 500 right so let's take 1000 okay we want to see the spectrum there and then max value of y level is zero to one okay so zero to one if i run this Okay, we can see like our spectrum is right at 500, right? And we also have some side, side bands, which is going to be always there, right? And you can also do um, do one thing, um, take um, the, the semi-logy maybe of Y and uh, then run it. I think I need to change the axis here, but for now let's run it and uh, command this out. So this guy and then run it. Okay, um, oh, so this is semi logy of, okay, I need to do that right here. Okay, so semi logy Y, and then let's um, comment this out. Okay, so this is our, um, so basically this is the power spectrum. Okay, and you know, I can zoom it a bit. Um, so the X level you can keep as it is. And the Y level, we can do one E zero and to let's say one E minus uh, three. Okay, let's run it. This is only going to be axis. Okay, sorry. Okay, uh, I think I have made a mistake here. This is the, the smallest number is going to appear first and then the larger number okay so if we done that okay so here is our spectrum okay and basically these are all side bands right here so hope you guys have learned something from this video